Okay, so I'm going to make some assumptions here. I'm going to assume that you already have some pretty good knowledge of trigonometry and some other uh, kind of prerequisites if you are interested in this video. Uh, you know, you're like, hey, if you're Morris theorem, yeah, that's what I'm learning. Well, if you're at this level of uh, uh, math, again, you should already have some prerequisite knowledge. So I'm going to kind of make those assumptions. But let's go ahead and take a quick look at what this uh, DeMora's theorem thing is all about. Okay, so in the big world of math, when we are dealing with complex numbers, so remember we have two different number systems. We have the real number system and the complex number system. So complex numbers are defined as A plus BI, or at least these are the forms of... Um, this is one form of a complex number. So there is a real part and then there is an imaginary part. So when we have a complex number, one of the things that we wanna be able to do is to find the powers of complex numbers, like this is our problem, right? But also we would like to find the roots of complex numbers, something like this as well. So how do we do this? Well, uh, this is where De Morf's theorem comes into play extremely important theorem. Let's take a look at it right now. Okay, so De Morve's theorem. If Z, okay, Z is our complex number. Okay, so that's what Z is. It's just a complex number in A plus B I form. Okay, so again, for example, this number right here is a complex number, but we'll assign it a variable Z. We'll call it Z. So if this complex number Z is in this form, and what is this form? R times cos uh, cosine theta plus I sine theta. This is polar form or trigonometric form, okay? This is something that you should already know how to master or uh, basically do is to take a um, complex number like this, okay, and turn it into a um, um, uh, basic, basically a trigonometric or polar form. That this right here is a big topic in and of itself, okay? Now, again, I'm not going to be able to teach all of this. Uh, let me just go ahead and make one quick uh, comment right now because I'm going to tell you or I'll remind you later in this video. If you are truly struggling in all of this, you're like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is, I don't even get this. I can't do that. I can't do this. Don't panic. Check out my pre-calculus course. It's my full course instruction. I will teach you everything you need to know about uh, trigonometry, De Morris theorem, uh, polar form, all that kind of stuff, because you know this stuff does require a lot of full instruction and a lot of detailed explanation on problems. Okay, so if um, if you don't understand, you know, even this part right here, you know, you're going to want to need, you're going to have to understand this before you, you know, take a further look at De Morris theorem. Okay, so let's just assume that you understand what I'm talking about. So this complex number z we can write into trigonometric or polar form. And this, again, is the radius times cosine theta plus I sine theta. Now, what we're going to do is say if Z is this, okay, is a complex number. So if this is a complex number, again, we can write a complex number in this form or this form. So Z is a complex number and N is any positive integer, okay? Again, any positive integer, so we're talking like one, two, three, et cetera, those type of numbers. Then we have this right here, z to the n. In other words, we're taking this complex number to some power, like one, two, three, four, or maybe eight, because that's the problem we're going to be doing, is equal to r to the n. Now, this is what we're talking about, this r right here, to the n uh, times cosine n times the angle theta plus i sine n times theta. Okay, so that is De Morve's theorem. Now we need to go ahead and apply it, and uh, let's go and do that right now. Okay, so first things first, here is our problem. We have this complex number, okay? We wanna take it to the eighth power. So we can't do anything. This is our complex number, uh, Z, okay? We're gonna take it to the eighth power. We can't do anything until we write this complex number Z into trigonometric or polar form, because currently it's an A plus B I uh, rectangular form and uh, you know most of the time we're, we deal with complex numbers in this form but in this case we need to put this thing in a trigonometric form this is a problem in and, uh, uh, in and of itself but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you the work or actually show you the answer okay so here is the answer so when you take this uh, complex number in a plus b i form and you put it into polar or trigonometric form 
uh, of course, that is going to be R C I S, right? Radius times cosine. Uh, then we have our um, imaginary component times sine. This is a, a pretty common abbreviation for trigonometric polar form. This is the answer. Okay, so two times cosine 150 plus I sine 150. And a lot of this work uh, you should be able to do even without the aid of a calculator. I know a lot of you are saying, without a calculator, this is crazy stuff. There's no way I'm gonna, just going to drop this course. Please don't drop this course. Okay, you're smart enough to do this. It just takes a lot of work and study and effort. Okay, that it does. All right, now you should kind of pause the video, all right, or just check to see if you can take this thing and write it into this thing. Because if you cannot take this complex number, Z, okay, in A plus BI form and put it into polar trigonometric form, don't even continue to, um, you know, uh, try to figure out De Moore's theorem because this is the first step. Okay, so this is a skill, a dedicated skill. You can figure it out. But again, this right here does take some work. So double check that you can do this. Now, if you can do this, then you are going to be good to go when it comes to De Moore's theorem. So let's go to continue on now. Okay, so here is our uh, question. So we have Z, well, not our question, here's our setup, right? So we have this complex number Z, and it's uh, negative square root of three plus I. Again, this is an A plus B I form, but we need to put this thing in trigonometric or polar form, so there it is. So now we have this complex number Z in both forms. We're gonna need this form to use De Moore's theorem. So what we want to do is take this complex number z, and we want to uh, uh, take it to the eighth power. Okay, so that this is the question. So this is really we're uh, trying to figure out what z to the eighth power is equal to. So remember, z is equal to this, and z is equal to this. So these are equivalent; they're just in different forms. Okay, so let's go back to De Morves' theorem. It says if z is equal to uh, this right here, which I guess is the trigonometric form. If the complex number, you can just kind of interpret this. Hey, if our complex number is in trigonometric form, okay, so this is a complex number, and n is any positive integer, then z to the n is equal to r to the n times cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through and interpret De Morves' theorem. And this is just a set of directions. Uh, you know, if we have this already set up right here, what we're looking for is this n. And what's our n for this problem? Z to the n is what? Well, we're trying to find this comp. We're trying to take the eighth power of this complex number. So eight is n. Okay, this is our n. It's the actual power. Okay, so we can see that here. So z to the n. This is going to be eight. Is going to be equal to r to the n. And then we're just going to put that uh, 8 right here and that 8 right there because this is n. So this is not um, the hard part of uh, the setup, at least. We do have some cleanup work to do, so let's go ahead and, and do this right now. Okay, so z, this is our complex number in trigonometric form. So we have our complex number. We're going to take it to the 8th power. Again, this is our complex number z. is going to be equal to, now let's just go back over here and make sure we understand. Okay, so it's r to the n. Now, what is r? We have to really pay attention to, to this. This is r right here, 2. Okay, so this is going to be r to the n, or 2 to, remember, n, again, is 8. That's the power. Okay, so this is going to be 2 to the 8th. All right, so hopefully you understand that. Cosine n times r angle. So that is going to be n. Again, n is 8 times the angle 150 degrees. And you're going to have to put this in parentheses. We're going to have to figure this out in a second. Plus I times N times that angle. This is always going to be the same. So that's going to be 8 times 150. All right. So let's go ahead and take the next step. So 2 to the 8th power is 256. And now we're going to have cosine of uh, 1,200. 8 times 150 is 1,200. Plus I sine 8 times 150 is 1,200. So 1,200, what is that? Well, remember... We have uh, this uh, large angle is going around uh, our circle here. How many times? Well, it went around three times and then another 120 degrees. So 120 degrees, cosine 120 degrees is the same thing as finding cosine of 1,200 degrees. And uh, sine of 1,200 degrees is the same thing as sine 120 degrees. Okay, so at this point here, uh, you should be able to tell me 
what is the sine and cosine of 120 degrees. And again, you should be able to do this without the aid of a calculator because we're dealing with all these special right triangles like 30, 60, 90 degree right triangles. So uh, this problem, again, if you weren't doing this without a calculator it's, uh, and you are able, now uh, this is a problem you uh, should be able to do without a calculator, could easily take you 10 to 15 minutes okay, of work because it's like problems within problems within problems. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So cosine of 120 degrees is going to be equal to negative one half and sine of 120 degrees is square root of three over two. Now, if you are using your calculator, that is fine. Okay, it all depends upon, you know, what you're going to see on your test. Uh, so your teacher may or may not on some questions, um, you know, it's certainly if you are dealing with nice, lovely angles like 120 degrees, 60 degrees, 30 degrees, and they're uh, equivalent angles with radians, uh, those problems are probably, uh, you know, not going to, you're not going to be able to use a calculator because those, um, you're dealing with degrees that you should know, uh, you know, you're dealing with trigonometric functions or degrees, trigonometric functions of degrees, excuse me, of things that you should already know by your little table that you created in trig course. Yeah, this is a lot of stuff. I get it. But uh, if you're dealing with something like, say, 62 degrees or 49 degrees, those type of things, then you simply have to use your calculators. Okay, so now that we have all of this, we, what we have to do is put this all together. We're almost there. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. You know, uh, you could probably think to yourself, like, boy, this guy put this uh, all together for, you, for me to understand this. It might be a little bit of work. Well, yeah, it is a little bit of work, but I love teaching math. It does me no good to have all this information. You know, I'm trying to help you understand it, okay? Particularly uh, those of you that are having a tough time at this level of math, which is a lot of you, okay? A lot of people are like, how is so good in algebra and geometry? But now this stuff is getting hard, and, you know, maybe you might be con concerned about your grade. You're like, I was starting off with an A, and now I'm going down to a B, and now I'm going down to a C. Now I just want to pass. This stuff is getting hard. Well, listen, don't get discouraged. Uh, this is quite normal. So what you're going to have to do, if you feel like your grade's going this way, you're going to have to increase your effort this way, okay? If you need great comprehensive instruction, I could definitely help you out with this stuff. So check out my full pre-calculus course. You'll see a link to it in the description below. It'll teach you everything you need. But if this video is enough, well, just give me a nice little uh, subscribe uh, to say, thanks, Mr. YouTube Math Man, and then hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this all together. All right, so remember, we had two to the eighth right here. We figured that out. That's 256 times cosine 120 degrees plus I sine 120 degrees. We know that cosine of 120 degrees is negative one half and sine of 120 degrees is square root of three over two. Okay, so we're gonna replace this stuff out uh, with these values. And remember, this problem stated that we wanted the answer in rectangular form or a plus bi form okay so that's going to be 256 again we're going to uh, replace uh, the cosine 120 with this so that gives us negative one half here and then i sine 120 is going to be i the sine of 120 is this value so that's going to be square root of three over two okay so now let's just go ahead and apply the distributor property here we'll take this multiply it by this stuff so 256 or uh, 1 half of 256 is uh, negative 1 half of 256 gives us negative 128 plus uh, 128 right here because we have this 2 goes in that. I'm pretty sure you could do this basic multiplication. Um, I square root of 3. Okay, so here is our answer. And what we did is we took this complex number Z in A plus B I form, rectangular form, took it to the 8th power. And uh, the way we did this is we took this uh, value, this number, this complex number, Z, we put it into trigonometric or polar form. Then we applied the Morphs theorem. Then we did all the crazy stuff with the Morphs theorem. We cleaned it up, and then we put uh, the answer back into um, A plus B I form. Now, sometimes you'll be asked to uh, uh, put your answer into trigonometric or polar form because you got to be uh, careful with these problems so this is the answer and uh, again this is only one part of what you need to know 
at this level of math. Isn't this exciting? But listen, if you're taking this level of math, it's probably a good chance that you're going to be developing the next uh, AI algorithms for Google or doing some crazy uh, stuff, you know, with, um, you know, who knows? You know, you're probably well on your way to uh, being highly su uh, successful with a STEM major. STEM, if you don't know what that stands for, is science, technology, education, and mathematics. But here's the deal, okay? Even if you are not a student and just kind of want to check out what this is about, that's great as well, all right? But this uh, level of math is something you, uh, that you definitely have to understand before you get into more advanced math like calculus. Okay, so hopefully this little video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.